worship the Lord now. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. your hands to sing that song one more time. Jesus, Jesus, We would like to sing He's all you need now. He's all you need. He's all. Psalm 149. Amen. I read. Praise ye the Lord. Sing unto the Lord a new song. And his praise in the congregation of the saints. Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praises unto him with a timbrel and harp. For the Lord taketh pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek with salvation. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. Amen. To execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishment upon the people. To bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. To execute upon them the judgments written. This honor have all his saints. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. 
Hallelujah. Let's bow our heads. Most High God, we thank you. Father, we are in your presence to worship. For it is written that unto the Lord shall the gathering of his people be. We are hearing this service to be serviced of thee. Lord, come and take absolute preeminence over all that will be done here, Lord. In the name of Jesus, as we worship and praise your name, Lord, may you, Lord, that inhabit the praises of your children, come down greatly, Lord. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. But Abraham said the best place to worship is under the blood. Amen. Where he sees you perfect. Amen. Oh, there is a fountain filled with blood. I love them, those sons. <laughs> How many of you want to worship him that way now? Amen. There is a fountain filled with blood. Amen. There is a fountain filled with blood. Blood from Emmanuel's feet. I am seen as blood. Lord, lose all the guilty state. Hey, lose all the guilty state. Lose all the guilty
praise God. Blessed be the name of our Lord. Do you believe that with all your heart tonight? That our power in the blood of Jesus Christ, praise God, is still available for whosoever will tonight. Amen. To never lose his power to deliver, to set the captives free, to heal the sick, to raise the dead, to make the blind to see the deaf, to hear the dumb to speak. Do you to the Lord our God? But those things that are, that are revealed believes i mean belongs unto his children and you and i we know what happened in our day that god himself he revealed every mystery to that prophet amen so god's servant all they can do is to pray from that open book that's already in the hand of the angel but that angel like we have heard over and over that that angel that was with Malachi 4, that Malachi 4, what with? That same angel is still on the earth today. Fixing everything for the coming of the Lord. Amen. And don't ever forget that what the prophet said, that the way you judge a man, any minister of God, is by the way he stays with that word. So the reveal word has already been given to you and I. Praise God. So the, and they reveal what took us back to the Bible, back to the Word, and that is why I appre we appreciate such gallant soldiers of the cross like Brother Jason Robledo. So I believe that you had your name being called from that open book of redemption. That's all that's in the hand of that angel. I will thank God because you've got to know who you are. You've got to know what God has spoken about you. You've got to know the purpose of your existence here on this earth to manifest Christ. Amen. The word. Amen. And the preaching of the word will always bring down the Holy Spirit. That's what we felt here this morning. So how we can we give the Lord a hand for what he did of this morning? To let us to remind of us who you are. To remind you of who you are, where you came from, and where you're going. Because it's very, very, very crucial. For you to know who you are to be able to walk with god very 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 crucial tonight there is i mean this afternoon there is no prayer request no any note of praise but i believe that each and every one of us you know that god is still working on each and every one of us and the prophet said that with god each and every one we've got a lot of growing up to do so we are growing up in christ Amen. Shall we bow our head for a word of prayer? Dear Lord, our Heavenly Father, Lord, I will thank you, Lord, once again, Lord, that we can come back, Lord. Lord, we have full of faith. We have full of expectation. We have full of thanksgiving, Lord. After the wonderful time, Lord, that you gave us here, Lord, Lord, this morning, Lord, with a, Lord, through a masterpiece of the message that you laid upon the heart of your servant, Lord. Lord, to let us know, to remind us, Lord, that you, the Almighty God, the Omnipotent God, the Omnipresent God, you have a timetable. Father, Lord, has connected, Lord, to that calendar, Lord, that is in heaven. And when God's time, appointed time comes, the devil can do nothing. Lord, when, Lord, that time comes, Lord, then it's time for God's divine, Lord, intervention. In our individual lives, no matter the situation that we find ourselves in life, no matter the circumstances that are surrounding us, Lord, Father, Lord, it's time for God's favor to find us, to locate us, Lord, wherever we are, Father. Lord, how we thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit that got a hold of our replay, the Lord, today, Lord. We thank you, Father. We pray, oh Lord, once again, your commanded blessing upon him, upon his family, upon his ministry, Lord. Lord, we pray, oh Lord, as we gather once again for that tonight. Lord, even though there's no note of praise, no prayer request, Lord. But Father, Lord, we stand, Lord, in need of you, Lord. Father, you are still, I am that I am, the God that is actively present to meet the needs of his people, Lord. So as we gather in here, Lord, with different needs, Lord, in our individual life, we pray, oh Lord, that you will drop down once again, Lord, tonight. 
Lord, Father, and set the captives free. May your servant, Lord, Father, as he come forward to deliver, Lord, the word of God. Father, Lord, may the arrow that's going to come forth, Lord, may it be directed by the Holy Spirit, Lord. And may it hit the target, Father, tonight. Lord, we are looking forward to it, Lord. We believe somebody is going to be delivered. We believe somebody is going to be healed. We believe somebody is going to be healed. Father, Lord, you know, we believe, Lord, that all things are possible, Lord, to them that believe tonight. So we pray, O Lord, and commit him, Lord, into your hand. We pray, O Lord, that you get him out of the way. Hide him behind the cross. Let your Holy Spirit, Lord, give him auction. Lord, give him the auction of your Holy Spirit that the word of God will go forth and you say, my world shall not return unto me void. It shall accomplish the purpose for which I send it. Father, let it happen, Father, again, Lord Jesus, tonight. As Lord, we set under the atmosphere of your Holy Spirit to hear, Lord, the unadulterated word of the living God. Father, Lord, as you revealed it to your prophet, William Aaron Brown, Blood to the world. And that is why I appre we appreciate such gallant soldiers of the cross like Brother Jason Robledo. So I believe that you had your name being called from that open book of redemption. That's all that's in the hand of that angel. I will thank God because you've got to know who you are. You've got to know what God has spoken about you. You've got to know the purpose of your existence here on this earth to manifest Christ. Amen. The word. Amen. Amen. And the preaching of the word will always bring down the Holy Spirit. That's what we felt here this morning. So how we, can we give the Lord a hand for what he did of this morning? To, let us, to remind of us who you are. To remind you of who you are, where you came from, and where you're going. Because it's very, very, very crucial for you to know who you are. To be able to walk with God. Very, very, very crucial. Tonight, there is, I mean this afternoon... There is no prayer request, no any note of praise. But I believe that each and every one of us, you know, that God is still working on each and every one of us. And the prophet said that with God, each and every one, we've got a lot of growing up to do. So we are growing up in Christ. Amen. Shall we bow our head for a word of prayer? Dear Lord, our Heavenly Father, Lord, I will thank you, Lord, once again, Lord, that we can come back, Lord. Lord, with a heart full of faith, with a heart full of expectation, with a heart full of thanksgiving, Lord. After the wonderful time, Lord, that you gave us here, Lord, Lord, this morning, Lord, with a, Lord, through a masterpiece of the message that you laid upon the heart of your servant, Lord. Lord, to let us know, to remind us, Lord, that you, the Almighty God, the omnipotent God, the omnipresent God, you have a timetable. Father, Lord, has connected, Lord, to that calendar, Lord, that is in heaven. And when God's time, appointed time comes, the devil can do nothing. Lord, when, Lord, that time comes, Lord, then it's time for God's divine, Lord, intervention in our individual lives. No matter the situation that we find ourselves in life. No matter the circumstances that are surrounding us, Lord. Father, Lord, it's time for God's favor to find us, to locate us, Lord. Wherever we are, Father, Lord, how we thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit that got a hold of our blood, the Lord, today, Lord. We thank you, Father. We pray, oh Lord, once again, your commanded blessing upon him, upon his family, upon his ministry, Lord. Lord, we pray, oh Lord, as we gather once again, Father, tonight, Lord, even though there's no note of praise, no prayer request, Lord, but Father, Lord, we stand, Lord, in need of you, Lord. Father, you are still, I am that I am, the God that is actively present to meet the needs of his people, Lord. So as we gather in here, Lord, with different needs, Lord, in our individual life, we pray, oh Lord, that you will drop down once again, Lord, tonight. Lord, oh Father, and set the captives free. May your servant, Lord, Father, as he come forward to deliver, Lord, the word of God. Father, Lord, may the arrow that's going to come forth, Lord, may it be directed by the Holy Spirit, Lord. And may it hit the target, Father, tonight. Lord, we are looking forward to it, Lord. We believe somebody is going to be delivered. We believe somebody is going to be healed. We believe somebody is going to be healed. 
Father Lord Jesus, we believe, Lord, that all things are possible, Lord, to them that believe to know. Uh, Brother Celestine, Pastor Chinedu wants to see you. Brother Celestine, Pastor Chinedu wants to see you. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We just go for our offering now. <clears throat> Time is filled with swift trans. Don't move, can't stand. Oh, oh, dear. Yeah, oh, what things in town. to God's unchanging hand. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this, our Lord. Lord, we want to give our offerings, Lord. We pray, Lord Jesus, that you bless our offerings, bless every hands. May these offerings be used for the furtherance of the gospel. In the mighty name of Jesus, thank you, Father. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray. Something seated and red, red, oh, was on changing hands. Come, not this world in me. Cheat, so that in me decay. Yes, I did. We'll never pass away. Hallelujah. Oh, End time restoration gospel assembly. Will you prepare for your special? Your hopes on T.C. Tata Word to God's unchanging hand Now listen I'm a pilgrim I'm a stranger Wandering through this world of sin On my way to the city when the saints go marching in. Oh, when the saints go marching in. Oh, when the saints go, go marching Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this, our Lord. Lord, we want to give our offerings, Lord. We pray, Lord Jesus, that you bless our offerings, bless every hands. May these offerings be used for the furtherance of the gospel. In the mighty name of Jesus, thank you, Father. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Oh, 
Restoration Gospel Assembly, will you prepare for your special? Build your hopes on things eternal. Hold to the sun changing hand. Now listen, I'm a pilgrim and a stranger. Wandering through this world of sin On my way to the city When the saints go marching in Oh, when the saints go marching in Oh, when the saints Marching in here, Lord, I want to be in the number when the saints go marching in. I am waiting for the chariots to swing low and I step me. On the cloud, I ride to heaven. Oh, when the storm is chilling, I am waiting for the chariots to swing low and I step me on the cloud. I ride to heaven Oh, when the saints go marching in Oh, when the saints, when the saints Oh, when the saints Oh, go the marching in When the saints go marching in Go marching in on I want When the saints go marching in. Amen. You may be seated. We'll be singing a special title, Through the Fire. Amen. To list and be blessed. Amen. God bless you all. Amen. This I want to do a song titled like you just mentioned. But before that, I want to say this. The Bible had never said we'll have a Christian work that'll be void of troubles, trials, thirstings, different things we have to go through, mountains and valleys. But there is one thing he has promised. I will never leave you nor forsake you. He said, we're going to have crosses to carry. We'll have hills we have to go through. And sometimes in carrying our crosses, we get to some point that the cross becomes very heavy. But one thing is, he made us sure, he said, when we get to those points that the cross becomes so heavy, as if it's going to crush you down. And you can just hold on until that point of time. He will show up. And through the fire, your weaknesses will be made strong as the character of Jesus will be formed in you. 
through the fire our weaknesses are made strong god bless you questioned the certain circumstances and things I could not understand many times in trials weakness blurs my vision and my frustration gets so out of hand but it's then I am reminded Many times in trials
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We appreciate that song. Amen. Oh my. Amen. Swing low. Sweet child. How come in for to carry me home? Swing low. Sweet child. Oh, come in for to carry me Swing low, swing low, oh sweet child, hallelujah, hallelujah, we appreciate that song, amen, oh my, amen, swing low, sweet child, how come in for to carry me home? Swing low, sweet child. Oh, come in for to carry me home. Swing low, swing low. Oh, sweet child. Oh, Coming for to carry me home, hey, hey, sweet blue, oh, sweet charming, hey, coming for to carry me home. You know that cloud of glory is moving, red, red. Oh, come in for to carry me home. Hey, hey, sweet blue. Oh, sweet charming. Hey, come in for to carry me home. You know that cloud of glory is moving red, red. Oh, move with the cloud, hold the cloud of blue, we smooth in, red, red, move with the cloud, amen, move with the cloud, let the, let your sand be renewed. shall receive as we move with the cloud move with the cloud out of blue we smooth in red red move with the cloud amen move with the cloud let the let your sin be renewed. Oh, come, let us move all together. As we follow the way he leads, new life you shall receive. As we move with the cloud, move with the cloud. Oh, give the Lord a hand of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Hallelujah. Amen. I just have the pleasure uh, to invite uh, our brother Martins in Erwa from I would say the 
God's general from Ibado, Nigeria. I bring my greetings from my precious wife at home, at the Saints, at Ibadan. Uh, I'm giving you 10 minutes so I won't talk much, uh, so that I don't waste my 10 minutes. Blessed be his holy name. Uh, I'm very happy to be here, waste my 10 minutes. Blessed be his holy name. Uh, I'm very happy to be here. Because Ephesians chapter 6 is of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places. Father, may you add your blessing to this portion of the scripture reading in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You can please be seated. Praise be to God. Amen and amen. amen. The Bible tells us that. His name will be called Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. From that scripture, we know that Jesus had a people. Amen? Jesus is not there for the serpent seed, for they are not convertible. Jesus died for his people. He knew them. Yes. He's the one that called them yes. by his that his name will be called Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. From that scripture, we know that Jesus had a people. Amen. Jesus is we were all born in sin. Shaping iniquity came to this world speaking lies. But God, who is rich in mercy, for new you, who is rich in mercy, for new you, for new me, had ordained us to be members of his family in every generation. Those members of his family are the overcomers. In this generation, the members of their family, for known of God, chosen of God, predestinated of God, amen, they will be the overcomers of this. And they are right here. Blessed be his holy name. This, the scripture we read. But Abraham read it to preach on a little message, the contest. It is a contest. A contest is a test of power. Remember. Remember. See, did not begin on earth. See, started in heaven. Had the devil. Paul, I know. But who are you? Remember. Why no? Paul. Christ was in Paul. If Christ is in you today, oh, hallelujah. Praise be to God. Do I see half any minute? Oh, my. Blessed be his holy name. Oh, let me just read something. But Abraham told us that in the natural, every government, they have their own army. They train them. They buy the latest weapon for them. Trade them out to outdo with the weapon. Every time they have to change for the latest weapon. But where God gave his weapon to his family. Brothers and sisters. Because God is infinite. He knows the edit from the beginning. He knows that it's going to be a contest. He has given us his word. What Abraham called that word atomic bomb. Amen. Yeah. Generation. There is no one among that family that can be defeated. We are more than cockroaches. 
through him the Lord us brothers and sisters we are ordained not to fail and we will not fail amen oh my let, let me let me just read something then I, I will finish I, I, I don't want to exceed my time oh blessed be his holy name Listen, listen, listen. God knew that this great warfare was coming on between right and wrong. He knew what the enemy was going to do. He not just says, we are more than cockroaches. Through him, the Lord us, brothers and sisters, we are ordained not to fail and we will not fail amen under any circumstances the word of god will defeat satan anytime anytime anywhere under any circumstances when, when, when Jehovah of the Old Testament, Jehovah of the Old Testament, when he became flesh here, that we call Jesus Christ, when Satan came to him face to face for battle, remember he had all power, both in heaven and in earth. He did not use his power, he used his word. It is written. Woo. Brothers and sisters, may may i say this i then stop brothers and sisters shake one another i say we are more than cockroaches oh we are more than cockroaches brother blessed be sorry we are more than cockroaches it is god about our us god equip us god equip us brother we are more than cockroaches we are more than cockroaches to him that love us god bless you i say god bless you god bless you Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What can we say? You appreciate Brother Martins? You are more than a conqueror. Not just a conqueror, but more than a conqueror. The bride with the word in her is more than a match for the devil. Poor devil, he has lost the battle. He has lost you. There's nothing he can do about you. But I remember said this morning that this happened, that happened. It just makes us better Christians. So when the devil flies and he comes, he comes like a flood, the Spirit of God raises a standard. And this meeting, God has raised a standard. And the devil can do nothing about it. We are more than conquerors. You appreciate the Lord Jesus Christ. You appreciate Brother Martins. You appreciate Brother brother this morning. Let's give the Lord a hand of worship. We are going higher, 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 higher. The standard is very higher, higher, higher. The arrow is striking the enemy. We are whipping the devil. Take it, Satan. Take it, Satan. Take it, sickness. Take it, flesh. Take it, unbelief. We are whipping the devil. Hallelujah. The shadow of the king is going to come. Amen. Praise the Lord. What can we say? Hallelujah. Are you ready for the word now? Are you ready for more? For more blessings? For more arrows? For more strikings? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I have the honor to bring to the platform my dear brother, Dele Adolodun. Hallelujah. Amen. As our brother comes, we are going to sing a song. Only believe. All things are possible. All things, not some things. Not those things you think are possible. 
but all things are possible if we can just believe amen let's bow our heads and just sing the song as our brother comes only believe only believe all things are possible only believe yes only believe only believe all things are possible only Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. All things are possible. Lord, I believe. Oh, yes, Lord, I believe. The nun. Our coffers will be filled with your blessings. Oh Lord, I believe all things are possible. Lord, I believe. May we please bow our heads for a word of prayer. Gracious Father, that is the confession of our hearts. The Lord will believe tonight. Your prophet said, It is not only with you that all things are possible, but also if we believe, all things are possible with us. Lord, we would ask that you would make us your believing children. There are through these meetings, O oh God. The entrance of your kingdom will be enthroned in our hearts. Please take us deeper in your love. Thank you for that. So that ended the Lord's prayer. But then Christ went further to make a few extracts for emphasis in the Lord's prayer. He said, for if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, Neither will your father forgive your trespasses. Mark chapter 11. Verse 22 to 26. <clears throat> and Jesus answering saith unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he said. Amen. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. But there's a caveat. And when ye stand praying, forgive, if ye have what against any, that your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. But if ye do not forgive, neither will your Father, which is in heaven, forgive your trespasses. May the Lord add his blessings to the reading of his holy word. God bless you, church. You may be seated. I would like to thank the Lord for this opportunity or privilege he has given unto me to stand before believers uh, at this time in this part of our country. And uh, I want to also appreciate very much the gesture of the host pastor to have uh, invited me and facilitated the coming of me and my wife uh, to this August gathering. I want to say may the Lord bless you. May the Lord bless the family, the host church, 
and uh, reward you bountifully for all that you have put in to create such a time for God's children to be together. I appreciate all the servants of God who have spoken before me and in advance also appreciate those who will come behind. Uh, I want you to know that your labor of love uh, has done a lot in our lives. The prophet said, no man comes to the presence of the Lord and go back the same. And I'm assuring you that we are going back better because uh, you have yielded yourself to God and through these meetings, God has rippled through the vessels of clay to reveal himself unto us. May the Lord bless your efforts, your ministries, your families, and the assemblies that you are overseeing. And I want to appreciate every one of you for coming to church and uh, making the sacrifices uh, under every condition that might have been uh, to be here. Uh, we thank the Lord you made it. And uh, it, uh, it's an encouragement to preachers uh, to see people to speak to. Because the gospel is not meant for chairs, neither is it meant for the walls, but it's meant for human beings. I want you to know that it's a privilege on our part to be able to speak with to you. And uh, thank you for giving us the opportunity. May the Lord bless you. I bring... Thank you. I bring greetings from home. Our pastor told me to give his very warm regards to the convention, and uh, so do the rest of the ministers, the offices, and uh, the families back in the assembly. Uh, well, I bring greetings from my children. This time, uh, I don't need to bring from my wife because she, we are here together. And uh, as many as she has opportunity to greet, she will do just that. I want you to know that we are all happy to be here. The Lord bless you. Uh, this afternoon, if the Lord will be our help, which I trust he will, I want to speak on forgiveness. Uh, that's my subject this afternoon. I want to speak on forgiveness. There are about two or three versions to the scripture that we read in Matthew chapter 6. In another version... I think in the book of Luke, it was the disciples of Jesus Christ that actually made a request to Christ and say, teach us to pray just like John taught his own people. And that Jesus said, that is fine if you want to know how to pray. Now, but in teaching them to pray, it took them back beyond time. It took them back into eternity for them to understand the mind of God concerning time. Time isn't an accident. It was well prepared right in eternity uh, before it started. When I say time, I mean the time it was said in the beginning, God created heaven and earth. There was always existence before that beginning. Amen. Amen. Now, the one who existed before that beginning is called Elohim. And the meaning of Elohim is a self-existing one. So while he was in this eternity all by himself, he started conceiving some ideas which he wanted to bring to pass. Amen. He conceived the idea uh, to be God. Because as at the time he was Elohim, he wasn't God. As the, name, as the meaning implies, he was self-existing. He had nobody around him. He had no fellowship. But within him, he had a desire for fellowship. He had an hunger for association. Amen. So he desired to be God. But he also came up with a second desire. And that is to be known beyond being God. Why? Because in him we have many attributes that he will love to display. Now, but the challenge we're going to, we're, he's going to have here is that being God and being known beyond being God is going to create a contrast. Now, you will understand what I'm saying. God is called an object of worship. 
So as long as he created angels or, or he created people who are bringing praises and worship to him every day, he has achieved his desire to be God. But then he also has another desire. He wanted to be known beyond being God. And for him to be known being, beyond being God, the condition of perfection must undergo some alteration. Okay. I think uh, the audience is easy for me to preach with because to preach to because the old man has already given you a charge. All right, so they are our foreigners. They've done a good job that we are keen into. God bless you, sir. All right, so <clears throat> in his desire to be known beyond being God, the perfection in which he lives in will undergo some alteration. Now, because perfection cannot be altered or contaminated, then there will be a need to create something outside of perfection in order to bring the program to pass. And when the program had run its entire course, perfection will resume again. So, there will be a perfection in the beginning, and there will be a perfection at the end. This is why, this is why he is called the Alpha and the Omega. Brother Bram said, he is not everything in between. So, in order to be known beyond being God, his desire to be known beyond being God is to afford God himself an opportunity to display all the attributes that he has in himself. Let's share some of them. He has the attributes. Attributes means abilities. He has the attributes to be a savior. For him to save, something must be lost. Nothing can be lost in perfect eternity. He has, the, he has the attribute to be a healer. For him to heal, something must be sick. There is no sickness in perfection. He has the attitude, attribute to be a redeemer. For him to redeem, something must get out of his place. Nothing can be out of cater in perfection. He has the attributes to be a deliverer. For him to deliver, something must be held in captivity. Nothing can be held in captivity in eternity. And yet, these attributes must be displayed. You know why? God does not just want worshippers. If, if, if all his interest was just worshipping some worshippers, when he created angels who were never tired, who can sing holy, holy 24 hours, he should have been satisfied. But do you know, but do you know the kind of worship God wants? He wants worshippers with a sense of appreciation. All these things, all these things were taking place in eternity. Satan wasn't even in the picture at all. All in the mind of God. And that was why in Revelation chapter 5, you can see the setting of worship there. When the Lamb took the book, it created such a revival. It created such a joy. But no worship was a showstopper until John started worshipping. All the hosts of heaven and things were worshipping. But when this guy John came, which in a figure was you and I, because John was your shadow, you are the reality. 
John was your prophecy, you are the fulfillment. When John began to worship, the Bible said, heaven had to keep quiet. Earth kept quiet. Even hell. They kept quiet. And they had to listen to John. Why? Because John was a worshiper with a sense of appreciation. John could say, once I was lost, but now I am found. Once I was blind, but now I see. Let me tell you, church, that was exactly why in Revelation chapter 13, Satan also was not satisfied. What did the Bible say in Revelation 13? It said, all the people of the earth will worship him, whose names are not in the book, Lamb's book of life. When all the people of the earth are worshiping him, he should have been satisfied. But the devil wasn't satisfied. Why? Because when he came up with his plan in eternity, the kind of worship he wanted is not from all the people of the earth. Read your Bible very well. He wanted worship from the stars of God. Just as Amen, Amen in the book of Esther, wasn't satisfied with the worship from all the people in the kingdom of Azueros. He wanted worship from Mordecai. <laughs> because Mordecai's worship is your worship. A worship with a sense of appreciation. But thanks be to God. No matter how hard the devil try, he will never get it. By predestination, by ordination, by the program that can never change. Our worship belongs only to God. I'm just trying to show to you that the devil is not as powerful as you think. You know why? After God concluded the program, then he looked for a guy whom he can use to bring his own program to pass. That is why Brother Abraham said, and when Satan has brought to pass that which was necessary to the purpose of God, he can't do anything outside of what was necessary and even today of what is necessary to bring the purpose of God to pass. At the end of this journey, the devil will realize very clearly that he was only being used. He will soon be dumped. Let me tell you, there is no amount of Satan's activity that can send you to hell. No, 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 no. No amount of Satan's effort whatever he does that can change God's mind about you no so this is the kind of thing our God wanted and it's so beautiful the Lord will show his disciples those things and uh, In order to start bringing it to pass. <laughs> Knowing that some of those things cannot take place up there. The prophet said he created a loop called time. All these IT specialists know when they are writing a program to do this, to do that, to do this, to do that. And they send it for some critique. And somebody will say, how about if this other thing or circumstance happen? The writer of the program does not condemn his entire program. 
what it does is that if he hasn't thought of that before, you know what he will do? He will create a loop, a branch out of the original program to take care of that circumstance and find the loop back into the main program. That is what this time is all about. A loop out of eternity. So church, in this great loop, he brought his son Hadam. And uh, he brought his wife, they called him Eve. And you see, the way he brought Adam, he chose not to bring Eve like that. It's all to further the purpose that was in his mind. Are you catching it? God has never been caught on our ears, not for one day. And he intentionally created a creature called serpent. The prophet in the message serpent seed, he said when the Lord created him, he gave him the understanding of the principles of life. Meaning that he knows the mechanism of what to do with his body. He was only waiting for his dynamic to make him go to work and actualize his agenda. So sometimes in your rising up in the grace of God, you must look at Genesis 3 beyond the fall. He said, and Satan upset, and Satan upset. But do you know it was God's devised, devised plan? You think Satan caught him and had a chance? It was what God brought him to do. <laughs> so, when he put everything in order, you know the story. The Bible said, at the cool of evening, God will come down. Let me tell you, he's never tired of you. He's never tired of having fellowship with you. So Adam being the resident pastor or deacon, he will organize the church. And they will have the opening time. And they will take the prelude and everybody will get themselves set. And they will have a song service. And after I will say, let's invite the pastor. And God himself will come and minister to his people and the prophet put it like this very dramatically it said that after the fellowship he will take his children back to their houses rock them to their bed and go back he still does that today <laughs> now you will think that he's all satisfied he wouldn't need to come again but i tell you next day he's coming back because he cannot just have enough of your fellowship. But Satan, the enemy of God and the enemy of his children, in its appointed time, amen? God allowed him to come and upset the garden. And where the garden became upset, God came down as at other times, but he met nobody in service. He waited throughout the waiting period. Nobody showed up. Song service, nobody showed up. Time to preach, nobody showed up. What's going on here? Then God himself got up and started looking for his worshippers. Hey them, hey them, where are you? By the time he had gathered confidence, boldness to speak, he couldn't even come out. God was only hearing his voice. Ah, I, I, because I realized I was naked, I heard from you. Who told you you were naked? Have you done what I said you shouldn't do? Now, it was men who sinned. But it was God looking for him. Are you seeing the nature of God's children? God loves reconciliation. And every true child of God must like reconciliation. If you are waiting till eternity for a quarrel or a battle to be settled, it's the very sign you won't be there. Those who came from there love reconciliation. It doesn't matter whether they are the one right or wrong. By the time God saw his children, they were so deathy, he couldn't touch them. 
Now, he also realized that there's a big gulf between him and them. What must he do? If he allow them to go away like that, that means he lost his family. That means his purpose is defeated. Because God wanted a family. His idea of having a family started in eternity. And the prophet said that he could give himself the name Jehovah. It means he's a father with a large family. Now, here is the seed to make the large family as communicated from him. If he allows them to go that way, he has lost everything. Are you saying that more is at stake for God than even you? <laughs> you didn't catch that. More is at stake for God than it is at stake for you. The losses of God in this project is more than your own losses. Because he will lose his reputation. He will lose his family. He will lose his Godship. And because he cannot stand such losses, he's got to do something about it. What did he do about it? He offered forgiveness. So we can start our subject now. We're just trying to show how we came about the subject. He offered pardon because that is the only way he could get his family back. And then when he did, he told Adam, he said, no problem. They were passing box. It is the woman, it is the serpent. When it came to the serpent, he had nobody to pass box to. He said, I guess it is the devil. And when he came to the devil, he said, well, it has to be me because I'm known for every evil. God said, no problem. You will take care of your kingdom, but I will take care of my own children. So God told Adam, the penalty of my word demands that I take you out of this range. But I'm not going to take you out of this range without a hope. I must show you in my device plan, my program to bring you back. So Adam died with an hope in his heart. That no matter how bad it got, his generation will be restored. So what did God do? What did he do? God took a lamp by himself right at the gate of the garden, erected an altar, slaughtered the lamb, and used the skin of the lamb to wrap his son and to wrap his daughter. And as they were leaving, the dripping of the blood was spelling L-O-V-E. And God told, God told Adam, don't worry. Don't worry. I know it's bad. I don't want to do this. But I have to stand by my word. In order for you to trust me, I have to stand by my word. He said, it is the penalty of my word that drove you out. But my love and grace for you will bring you back. See what I have done in a shadow. The perfect lamb will come someday. Amen. And do exactly the same thing. Offer his blood. Then all Adam's children can now return by the offering of the perfect blood. You love him tonight. And uh, it started there from, it started there from, great men were coming, great men were going. And each of them, after a great exploit for the kingdom, they will die and pass away. But you know what? They couldn't go into God's presence because the blood of the Lamb's offering was only given a covering. It has not given perfect remission. And until there is perfect remission, there cannot be true justification. Oh, yes. So, on and on and on and on, people were coming, people were going. Then one day, a body as thou prepared for me. 
that body became manifested and he was walking the streets of Jerusalem Bethlehem Judea Samaria doing good but all those wonderful things he was doing was not his essence of coming its primary essence was to settle the same question permanently so after he had healed the sick raised the dead he confronted Gethsemane and Gethsemane was like a labor room Calvary was your delivery room just follow me we will get there in Gethsemane, the prophet of the Lord said, Jesus entered Gethsemane in his 100% manliness because he wasn't going to suffer as God. If he suffered as God, he will feel no pain. Then he will not become the captain of your salvation. For him to be the high priest that can be touched with the feelings of your infirmities, he must suffer as a man. So as a man in the garden of Gethsemane, the preview of his suffering was shown to him and he was asked, are you ready to take it? Now, Gethsemane is important for every one of us. Let me tell you, Gethsemane is more important than Calvary. It's just that you don't realize because if there is no perfect decision in Gethsemane, there will never be a Calvary. And you know what? It's got to take a decision to bring hope, to bring remission to the past sins. Listen to me very carefully. It's got to take a decision that will take care of the present sins. It's got to take a decision that will take care of the future sins. So the past sins, the present sins, and the future sin rested upon his decision. The prophet said, this decision is what proved his great messiahship. So when he said, not my will, let thy will be done. Hallelujah. And few hours later, he went to get him many. And it was declared, it is finished. Now wait for it. The past sins, the present sins, and the future sins were all forgiven. Too hard for you to swallow. But swallow it. The sins of the past, I repeat, is not a slip of tongue. The sins of the present, the sins of the future, we are all forgiven the day Jesus went to Calvary and declared it is finished. I want to say this. God is not presently forgiven sins. He has already forgiven sins. As a matter of fact, there is nothing God is presently doing. Everything he wanted to do for you, he has already done. That is why the blessings of redemption we are all written using the past tense by his tribes. Now they caught it. He never said you will be healed. He said you were already you were healed before you had the sickness. Solution existed before the problem. The chastisement of your peace has been placed upon him because this lamp was slain before the foundation of the world. Those whom he called, he justified. Those whom he justified, he already predestinated to be conformed to the image of his dear son. Whether you like it or not, adoption is a finished work. Each day will drive you gradually because there's an appointed time. 
You love him. The prophet of the Lord said, the job of any true elder or preacher is not to come and be telling you, Jesus will do, Jesus will do. It's to show you what he has done. And through the preaching of the gospel, knock out every doubt and unbelief from you so that you can rise up and reach out and begin to receive your claims. So if you need forgiveness, forgiveness was already waiting for you. Let me show you something perfectly. After Adam's error, God popped up another man. Because Adam lived under conditional covenant. But then God brought another man they called Abraham. Watch that guy. Even Paul told you to watch that guy. He said because his life was an allegory. The life he lived was a future representation <laughs> of you. That's what the Bible said. So Abraham, as great and powerful as he was, he was a mere shadow. You are the reality. It was your prophecy. You are the fulfillment. Now, when God started his friendship with Adam, Abraham, having achieved his initial desire to be known beyond being God, created a condition for that, he changed the covenant. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. To Adam, he placed him under condition. Listen to this very well. But when it came to Abraham, he gave him an unconditional covenant. Have we ever looked at it at all? Now, God knew that Abraham carrying this body of flesh, this flesh you carry, it's a rebellion. Because of the way it was bred. Amen. It's a rebellion and a rebel. No matter how much of God you have, you have, you cannot convert this flesh. The teaching of the prophet said the highest the flesh could get now is a subjection. That is why in eternity you will not need this particular one. You will receive another one that looks exactly like this but is in a glorified condition. And that is why even to enjoy millennium you will not need your parents to reborn you again. It, you will be transplanted back because your original design was to have come by spoken word uh-huh and that is why today the only thing that can take you back to that original is the spoken word god's spoken word is the original seed this is why the spoken word is very powerful to bring transformation it will work upon the atoms of your body and change you gradually from glory to glory. And one of these days, this your earthly vessel will not be able to contain the glory. It will give way for a better body. So presently, is a rebel. Amen. And the highest you can do is to keep it under subjection. That is why you need a change from within. Because anything the devil suggests to it, it's so easy for him to take it. It's a material for the devil. But as he takes it and tries to run it through, when the real household that God has taken over with him, he will tell that thing, not here, get out of here. That is why Brother Bram, in the message thinking man's filter, he said the first appearance of evil you cannot avoid. He said, but when the real householder is within, he will keep his eyes from turning to have a second look. <laughs> so don't trust this flesh. Don't trust this flesh. Don't get close to sin and see how you will not commit it. Don't trust this flesh. Young people, old people, don't trust this flesh. Put it under subjection all the time. Yeah. 
So God knowing, knowing the tendency for the body of men to rebel against his program. And he was determined to actualize his eternal program through Abraham under no condition. <laughs> I'm going to give you bones to crack now. Under no condition whatsoever. So before the contract started, you know what he did? Let's enter into a deal. Because even Abraham was asking God, this story about you make me father of this and that, where which shall I know? God wasn't annoyed. God wasn't irritated. Said, no problem. I will show you how to know. And the prophet said, God condescended to show it to Abraham in the way he will understand. God is so simple. Until sometimes you walk over his simplicity. <laughs> he said, I know for a deal to be sealed with you people, you bring animals together. You divide them. You bring your cow, you divide it. You bring your ram, you divide it. And uh, so on and so forth. He said, you do that. He said, but while you are bringing that, add two more things for me. Add the turtle dove and pigeon. God has a purpose for that. The prophet said, the turtle dove and the pigeon speaks of atonement and healing. Because God wanted to make the deal seal proof that nothing will ever make him because you know if the devil couldn't get you he will use Balaam's trick when Balaam tried to curse the people of God and he couldn't curse them amen you know what he did he gave them a suggestion that will force God to deal with them in his own manner because God has to respect his word God understood every trick of the devil so in this case, he wanted to make it seal proof that even if the devil pulled Abraham to do things that will make God to be forced to deal with him, he will refuse to do it. <laughs> that is why I said, watch Abraham closely. He said, bring the pigeon and bring the turtle dove. And then when he brought it, he said, watch over your sacrifice. And Abraham from morning to night was chasing the flies away. But after a while, he got tired and he slept off. When he was sleeping, I wonder who was helping him chase the flies. God had to allow him to come to that condition to show to Abraham, it is not by your work, it is not by your effort, it is not by your ability. Lest you would think you have a contribution, it is all by me. Not what you did, not what you've done, not what you will do, but what I have done. Abraham may not even understand, but God took care of it. So one day, after God had taken care, Abraham began to continue with God. And he found himself in a place with Abimelech. And he made up the story. And uh, even for what looks like a failure on the part of Abraham, God dealt with the house of Abimelech. He shut up everything in there. And because of the integrity in the heart of that man, he appeared unto him. He said, you are a dead man. You are preparing yourself to live with another man's wife? Abimelech said, excuse me? Another man's wife? No, sir. It is my bride that I'm preparing to marry. Uh -huh. It's your bride? It's not your bride. Restore the man his wife. Who is the man? The same guy, Abraham. But he told me it was the sister. Okay. Then they set up a court to try the case. And Abimelech came with his lawyer and his case file. Because this guy Abraham has got to be dealt with. And Abimelech said, in the integrity of my heart, have I done all this? When they called Abraham to defend his own, he was looking. But you see, unfortunately, for the whole court process, the judge is also the lawyer for Abraham. Go, go, go read that story. <laughs> go read that story. 
Abraham never said one word. All that needed to be said was spoken on his behalf. God said, okay, 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 okay. I see your integrity. That is why I also kept you from sinning against me. So Abimelech must have been like, but how do we deal with this man? He said, leave that business to me. You know why? Abraham couldn't be dealt with because he has an advanced atonement. Check it out, church. In Genesis 17, you talk about Sarah, Sarah smiling within herself. And you think that's a bigger deal. That's a big deal. I'll give you a bigger one. Sarah laughed. Uh, Sarah smiled within herself. But the Bible said Abraham laughed to the face of God. God came again, started talking. Abraham pretended as if he was listening. God talked, 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 talked. He talked about the generation that will come. He talked about the children. He even talked about circumcision and everything. After God finished, the Bible said Abraham looked like this. <laughs> You know, this is your story, story about that we have a child. He said, look at my wife, look at myself. Ah, ah. He said, you know what? You know what? I can agree. You know, sometimes everything can fail. It doesn't matter. But you see what? Let Ishmael live before you. That was falling it flat in the face of God. But why couldn't God deal with him? Because there was an advanced atonement. And to make the case, to rub it in our face. Then the Bible came in the New Testament and started talking about the commentary of Abraham. And he said, Abraham staggered not. At the promises of God. True home belief. Church, you need the perfect atonement. For you to be seen as God made you. Do you know all this while, while Abraham was doing all those things, the reason God couldn't see it was because the atonement gave a better picture of Abraham. The prophet of the Lord said, when God looks at us, he doesn't look at us with his bare eyes. He looks at us under the sphere of his atonement. And that is why you can claim being sinless, being perfect, being glorious, being without spot, without wrinkle. All those things that was going on was done mainly in his Abraham dispensation. But because there was a torment, there, will, there is nothing that will be strong enough to keep Abraham from becoming Abraham. So when Abraham became Abraham, it became if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Behold all things. They are not just passed away. They are thrown into the sea of God's forgetfulness. He doesn't even remember them. This is why the prophet said, if a sin is confessed and made right, he said God does not even remember it to bring it up even on that discernment. Church of the living God, your safety is to walk in the light. This is why James or John the beloved said, if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, the blood of Jesus cleanses. The use of the word cleanses there means present continuous. Cleanses us. There is constant atonement 
for those who walk in the light. Because sin does not come to them by desire. They could make mistakes. God does not look at it. You love him. I want you to see. Look. I want you to know what you already have in God. So that this, this old devil will not cheat you. The prophet said, faith is based on forgiveness. If you don't feel forgiven, you can never have a good work with God. If I'm a friend to Pastor Isaac here, I think I'm right. And we are so close. And one day I offended him. And uh, he said, look, Brother Dele, because of this that you have done, I can never forgive you. Do you know what he has done? He has put me in bondage. When I see him, I'll be so nervous. I wouldn't know if to cross to the other side or to remain where I am. I wouldn't know if to greet him or to just let him pass. I will constantly live under pressure. That is the way many of us are living in our Christianity. When a preacher gets to the pulpit, we are nervous. When we hear special numbers, we are nervous. Everything appeals to us in the wrong way. And you give God a bad name. All right. But what if this pastor said, Brother Dele, let's not even talk about it. Let's put it under the blood. And let's allow things to go on as before. Do you know what is going to happen? Our relationship is going to get stronger. Because now I can relate with him with a sense of appreciation. That is exactly how God wants it. He's not a tough God like you think. It's somebody who knows your frame. Who knows that you are mortal. The Bible said he will not always chide. Neither will he keep his anger forever. He knew the things that you could do. In order to give you protection and assurance, he gave an advance atonement. He already died in his mind before you came on the earth. What you must do is just to accept your forgiveness. As available as these things are, until you accept it personally, it will never be your possession. A pardon is not a pardon. Until accepted by the man being pardoned as his own pardon. Somebody ran away from battle. And that was a treason or, or felony or something. They arrested him and they were going to kill him. His friend had a chance opportunity to meet Mr. President. And so you see, this my friend is a good man. It does not mean any harm. He was only afraid of the noise of the bombs. Please pardon my friend. And the king had compassion, and the president had compassion. But where they met, uh, did not give him an opportunity to write his pardon in an official letter added with the signature of the president. But anyhow, the president asked for a paper, believing that his signature is enough to get the man his pardon. And this friend took the paper as common as it was to his friend in the prison and said my friend you don't have to die the president had signed your pardon but the tragedy was this this friend took the paper he said if the president of united states will sign my pardon will it be on the cheap paper like this the offering the provision is too simple we run over it it is the nature of man since he fell when he fell in the beginning he came up with the fig leaf idea thinking that he has a contribution to make in order to be saved to be delivered to be forgiven but when god came down his contribution failed him 
because with his fig leaves he couldn't even stand the presence of God until today God requires nothing but for you to accept what he has offered and this man trample it under feet tore it and throw it away And the hangman came and hanged him. And the president was embarrassed. How could I have signed somebody's pardon and you kill him? And the case began to start from the lower court until it came to the Supreme Court. And here was the ruling. Was the pardon signed by the president? They said, yes, 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 it was signed. Was the pardon delivered to the man for whom it was meant? Yes, 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 it was delivered. Now, did that man take it personally as his own pardon? Mm, that's where the problem is. Then the judge ruled, a pardon is not a pardon. Even though signed, sealed, and delivered, until it is accepted by whom it is being pardoned as his own pardon. So God makes these things available, but until you take them for yourself personally, it will never be yours. Accept your forgiveness and live without condemnation. Now, the reason we have to say this is because until you feel forgiven, you can't have a good Christian walk. Number one. Number two, you yourself, you cannot give what you don't have. If you have not enjoyed forgiveness and the blessings of a release that it gives, you will not know how it is to forgive another person. The reason a lot of us today have unforgiven spirit is because we have not enjoyed the relief, the pardon of God gives to a man's heart. But I want to shoot an arrow to that demon. This afternoon. I will make it very tough for you not to forgive. Listen to this. When the prophet was teaching on the seals. And he came to the fifth seal. The prophet said the very indication. That the souls under the altar cannot be gentle bright material is the way they were crying for vengeance mm. <laughs> underline that meaning that a real gentle bride will not have it in himself to get even with somebody Meaning that a real gentle bride will never seek for vengeance. After all, wait a minute. To begin with, vengeance is not human property. There is only one person who claims vengeance as his property. God said vengeance is. Why are you struggling with God over his property? A gentle bride... A gentle bride pulling for vengeance, asking to get even. Something is wrong somewhere. I'm making it tight for that demon. It must get out this afternoon. The prophet said the preaching of the gospel cast out demons. Allow me to fulfill my commission. The devil is under commission to put demons in our life. To afflict and to oppress us. But I'm under commission to cast them out. Allow me to do my job. <laughs> Number one. Let's throw another harrow. Because all of you with unforgiven spirit, you can never go out the same. You must go and sort it out. I don't care whether they are believers or unbelievers. You go sort it out. 
the prophet said, and the Bible said, if you have aught against anyone, it's like go meet them. If you don't deal with it, you are walking over the dangers of hell. That's a quotation. Number two, arrow. The prophet was teaching us about the birth pain utterances of Hebrew mothers. <laughs> Aha. There are many preachers coming up here. Now, these mothers, four of them, Leah, Rachel, Bila, and Zila, when they wanted to give birth, the prophet pointed our attention to the scripture, saying that whatever they uttered from their mouth, in the agony and pains of delivery, positionally places, put that child being born in its locational inheritance in the promised land. And no matter how Joshua is anointed, how powerful he is, he cannot do anything in sharing the land outside of what those mamas uttered. That is how powerful those utterances are. And I want to appeal to mamas here. I know the pains of delivery can be very tough. I've been privileged. I elected to be with my wife for a delivery of one of our kids. So just to, uh, it's not an experience, but you know what I mean? But it was tough. But it's, no matter how tough it is, still be a Christian in the labor and delivery room. Because even though you call it a natural birth, there is a supernatural element. The prophet said that natural birth is coming out for a life, for a spirit hanging around to possess it. So the circumstance is not altogether natural. So speak the right thing. If you don't know what else to say in the pains of delivery, just be saying, Hallelujah. Eh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. When the child comes, God bless you. When the child comes and becomes our song leader, we will know why. We know where it started. We must say the right thing. You agree with that? Now, let me take it further. We do sing this song. I'm going somewhere with that. We do sing this song, Is Everything, Is Everything to Me. Is our father, our mother, our sister, and our brother. Amen. In fact, for God to be El Shaddai, he has to be our mother. Because the meaning of El Shaddai does not suggest a male gender. The breasted one. You can't describe a man as the breasted one. It's got to be a woman. So that is Christ's motherhood for us. And being our mother, being our mother, he also gave birth to us. Amen? Gethsemane was the labor room. For, for visitors to our country, here before a woman is taken to delivery room, she has her time in labor room. When she achieves a dilation that prepares her enough for delivery, then they take her to the delivery room to finish the job. I'm sure it's the same thing everywhere. All right, sir. So in Gethsemane was the labor room. Because the prophet said, when Christ went to the cross, he went with you inside of him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when the midwife saw that the dilation is okay, he was taken to Calvary, the delivery room. And you were born under Caesarean section. Uh-huh. Because the first Adam got his bride through Caesarean section. 
So the second Adam will get his bride through Caesarean section. The Bible said the first Adam was given a deep sleeve. That's what the Bible call it. Today you call it Anastasia. And while he was sleeping, there was a surgery going on. And a delivery took place. And the blood was taken from his eyes. And by the time, you know, before Adam got run from Anastasia, the woman was just, she doesn't know where she came from. She doesn't know who she is. And she doesn't know where she is. She had serious identity problem. This is why every sister needs a good brother in her life. Uh-huh. It's part of the gospel. After salvation, the next best thing because it will take that man to solve your identity crisis. This is why till you are married, you are missing. Miss this, miss that. Miss. Somebody has got to find you and put you back. God bless you. You see why in the Old Testament, a woman is not reckoned safe until she receives a circumcision. That circumcision can only take place by male. Are you here? And spiritually speaking today, your heavenly bridegroom, as God will circumcise you, otherwise you are not saved. You don't just need a brother, you need a Christian. Mm, you need a spirit-filled, godly brother. So, brothers, if you feel challenged, then be a Christian. It's very easy. Be a Christian. If you are living wrong, and a sister come to us and say you are dancing around her, we will tell that sister an unbeliever is dancing around you. Uh huh. Okay. The Lord help you. So when Adam came around, he said, Excuse me, do you know who you are? I don't know. Do you know where you came from? I don't know. Do you know where you are? I even don't know. Ah, okay. I will tell you. You are the bone of my bone. You are the flesh of my flesh. You are taken out of me. You shall be called woman. He solved our identity crisis. So this second Adam carried you to Calvary. And uh, while on, the, on Calvary in the delivery room, it was also in the pains of the ready delivery. Are you spiritual? Yes. Your mother was also authoring something. What was he authoring? Okay. Okay, wait for it. For you to know it was a delivery. You know, the devil will like to break the wedge. He got the Roman soldier to carry a hammer. Saying that, uh, break his leg. God said, you dumb. This is not an orthopedic traumatic surgery. That's not what we are here for. We are here for cesarean section. So it is not the job of a hammer. Throw that hammer down. That was the devil's attempt to prevent your coming. But you can't stop it. So God got the Roman soldier. Pick, it's a, it's a, it's a cesarean. Pick a sharp needle. And take it right now to his side. Right, left side. 
right below his heart. Because the one coming will not rule over him, will not be trampled upon, but you, she will be something to treasure. So, and for you to know it was a delivery, when the spear was put in, water came out, blood came out. Then a piece off of the master, master's piece, also came out. Who was that? Me. You. 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 Hey, the devil realized that I shouldn't have done this. Because I'm trying to destroy one and many are facing me now. But while your mother was giving birth to you, what was she saying on the cross? Father, forgive them. Father, forgive them. For they know not what they are. So you are born under the birth pain utterance of forgiveness. You cannot be born by Christ and have unforgiving spirit. If you have an unforgiving nature, you have to tell us who your mother is. Because when our home mother was giving birth to us, she was uttering forgiveness. This is why the Lord took time to make an extraction from the Lord's prayer. It said so many things, but it brought this one out. It said, if, let's enter a deal. If you forgive, I will also forgive you. But if you don't, don't expect. And you see, this adoption we talk about, this thought pool and so forth we talk about, do you know it's based unforgiveness the strength of your character will be to love the unlovable and to forgive those who present themselves as unforgivable Jesus in Mark 11 he said you've got the capacity to speak to your mountains and the God will obey you now we pray someday we shall speak because we have a promise in the scripture. We have a promise in the message. Amen? Amen. The promise says we are amateur gods. There was a time Elijah was perhaps praying. But he came to a time. It said by my word. There will be no rain. There will be no dew. Until I. He shut the heavens. He didn't even pray. He only spoke. Then the prophet took that and said, look at what he said in Mark 11. If you, not Christ. And he said, time is coming. When filled sons of God, born sons of God, are going to speak and heaven will back up their statement. But do you know, that grace is not given to amateurs who wouldn't know what to do with the gift of God. 